green flag. Green flag. Green flag. The glorious sound of 25 supercars in the top end. And they are released and launch into action. And what a launch from Brock Feeney. A monumental start and his teammate is going with him. They'll be 1-2 into the first corner. Can Brody argue back? He swept out to the outside. It will be Feeney. It will be Brown. LeBrock has made a very strong start here as well. Brody Kostecki missed the kick. It just didn't get the initial jump. And Brock Feeney got a superb launch. That was a nice start. Beautiful job there by the Red Bull and Pole pair to be first and second. Traffic jam into the right under at five and up and over goes Heimgartner. An awkward moment with Cooper Murray. And another wheel interlocking moment like we saw yesterday. And that is unfortunately a lot of damage for the wild card entry. And I'm not sure that car's going anywhere in a hurry. What a shame. Safety yeah, car boards and flags. Now calling safety car boards and flags. Safety car. Great start by Feeney. Ripper start by Brown to drop straight up into second. If you can drive it back, yeah, try and drive a strong it back, performance by LeBrock to jump up there into fourth position as well. So can he get it cleared and back? Five, four, three, two, one. Safety car speed limit must be engaged. That's the full course yellow procedure that the drivers have been counted down to in the race management channel. So we've had it a couple of times, so there's something strange about the way the cars are able to interlock like this. Here's the replay. Uh, and I was talking about the traffic jam very deep in the pack, and then all of a sudden, I think Perkett may have been in behind Heimgartner, and he's climbed up and over the wheel of Cooper Murray. I mean, as an incident, it's not a big deal. It's just the fact that the cars flew and it was an awkward interlock of the wheels and it just launched the thing into the sky. It takes a bit of energy to put a tonne and a half of a supercar up in the air like that. And unfortunately, it's torn up the guards on the wildcard entry. Here's another view. Gee. So left front appears to have gone over the top of right rear. Yeah. Left front of Andre Heingartner's car over the right rear of Cooper Murray's 888 entry. And there might have been a couple of other people that copped some peripheral damage in all that as well. No, that's not a good look, is it? No, it's I've never seen the car so high like that and the way that he was able to... So, so Andre's still out there. Uh, and now it's dropped back on the road. Here's the onboard. Watch this, you're going to get a really good look of the underbody. That almost turned over off the back of it. So, Cooper had also made some nose-to-tail contact going into Turn 5 there as well. So, it's a classic concertina in that highly congested spot on the opening lap. Maybe Both able to band it line. and get it back out, one, provided okay. there's nothing too ugly mechanical going on. Remember, they need 36 laps in the bank in order to be able to have that car classified. Go. Speed they were just debating at Brad Jones Racing whether they were going to actually bring Andre Gart uh, Heimgartner in at all, but they finally decided it was best to do that. they got heaps of the bear bond here, so this thing will look like it's got band-aids all over it. While they're in the pit lane, I'll grab Brad Jones. Guys, Brad, obviously big drama at the start of this one for your team and for Andre. You guys were debating whether to actually even bring him in again uh, to have a look at that car. Well, yeah, I mean, they weren't that keen on bringing him in, but honestly, you've got nothing to lose and much better yeah, if we be have to repair something or patch something to do it when the safety car's out, as you well know, as a driver. So I told them to bring it in. Let's have a look, quick look at it. They seem to think it's OK. So. Um, it seems to be steering right. He's not complaining about any of that stuff, so we'll see what happens. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, and Scott. The, and the team at Super Cheap Auto going to work. They just asked Supercars officials if they had permission just to tape the rear of the car. They were given the go-ahead there. So it looks like, fingers crossed, this could be a fairly quick fix. Meantime, it was a Green ripping flag, start Green by flag. Feeney. His teammate went with him. It's an awkward start because the safety car was late going in. And, and the green flag, and they're all running into each other in the background. There's chaos behind there at the back because they've all tried to come onto the straight and get a run on the next competitor. There yeah. is some lively language going on also. But it meant that Brock Feeney couldn't go until, the green, until he saw the green flag. Here's what happened at the restart. Oh. So Waters having to grab the brake out of the final corner. But further up the field, you can see brake lights coming on as well. That's not what you want to see. And uh, James Courtney having to go all the way to the wall on the inside. Here's Waters 
he props. Whoa. Oh, and then they all have to prop again. That's that is dangerous. Crazy. That that is crazy stuff. It's pretty remarkable that they're and um, that's good news seeing Cooper Murray heading back out onto the racetrack. Five laps down. Further improvement of the fastest lap at 1 minute 7.6. So all of a sudden that elastic band is stretching between the two leaders. Gee, he's pressed on hard, hasn't he? Feeney, he's got a big gap there now, 1.3 seconds. And no further action lap one, turn five incident. It'll be deemed a racing incident yep. by the stewards and the driving standards advisor, Craig Baird. Pretty hard to unravel something like that. intervention of the safety car the BP Pulse safety car has been out today for an incident on the opening lap turn five in the right hand between Cooper Murray and Andre Heimgartner both are now circulating again but for Murray five and a half laps down on the field now with a moment to pause and think race controller having an opportunity to investigate the safety car restart procedure and whether there are any breaches I suspect that when they unpack that quite a lot of data involved in trying to see who did what to who but there's a bit going on there so it wouldn't surprise me at all if there's a case to answer in a few instances yep. when cars are checking up on a restart and they're on the brake and really it was facilitated because the go point for Brock Feeney was so late so everyone coming down the hill was trying to come onto the straight and get a run and optimise your restart performance but at the front of the field, they were still doing 80k. Has it been the sort of slice through the field that we saw in the early stages of yesterday's race, or not as far forward as we saw Austin? And if you if you took the discussion out to the logical conclusion, the more you learn, the tighter the field would pack. Yeah. So day on day, more people. Will in theory, have better cars than they had yesterday. So not as many easy beats is what I'm trying to get to. So yesterday there's a bit of trial and error. Not a lot of launch time on the Friday to learn what you do or don't have over the longer journey. Yep. And if we kept on going all week, by the time you got to the end of the week, you'd find it'd be next to nothing between a bunch of people. And it's hard. I drive through penalty to car eight for breach of safety car over speed. So... Race control really attention all teams. The stewards have imposed pit lane drive through penalties to cars two and cars three. Breach of safety car restart procedures. That's penalties for cars two and car three. Pit lane penalty drive through. Replay down here at turn one uh, with Matt Payne. Oh, contact with Ryan Wood. It's not been a good day for Wood, has it? And well into the weeds down there on the outside of turn one. Pit lane drive-through penalty. Please do us this lap. So that's not good news when you're coming out of the grass. No. James Golding and Jack LeBrock are also in the pit lane. I didn't see how many tyres there for... Uh, we'll get a read on that in a moment. James? It's 0.8 of a second between Feeney and Brown. So... When you think about the race so far, these two guys got off to a, a really great start. The gap at one stage went out, so Brown had come right up to the back of Feeney, and then Feeney was leading by a circa two seconds, and now Brown's forged his way back to be 0.6 behind. So there's been a bit of an elastic gap between the two of them over the first stint of this race. We'll see what sort of position that launches him into. Austin Evans, we're watching Chaz. That looks like it was a bit tardy. Okay, they're getting ready at Rebel. See Larko looking at that. Pitched up all a little butt there between the teammates. Evans and Jones, and we don't need to have a bump through here. Got away with it. Go, go, go. 
Brock Feeney in and done leaves Will Brown now in the lead. <laughs> Anton's now Race in Race control, on the lead. attention all teams. Stewards have imposed a 15 second time penalty to car 19 for a driving infringement. Matt Payne has already had a difficult start, unfortunately, from the pit lane with a fuel pressure problem. He's actually the race leader, so he'll be stationary for a long time. Good. Was a good stop. The three laps between them has delivered a yield with essentially a slight undercut for Feeney versus Brown. That gap, remember, was only half a second before the stops. There was nothing in the two stops. It was only 0.1 of a second between the two stops. But they stopped on lap 24 for Brock Fernie and lap 27 for Will Brown. 15 seconds would be an eternity when you're sitting yep. there. Everything's getting really hot at that point. Kostecki's got a personal best first James sector going two. here. JT on RMC. So two two point teams, eight. pit lane drive through penalty. The stewards have imposed a pit lane drive through penalty car triple eight. Breach of safety car over speed. I saw the note come up about the investigation, and so it's been a tough day for Cooper Murray, and it's about to get tougher. He's going to have to trundle down the pit lane. Slade's going to force the issue down on the dirty side of the road here. Not quite. Oh, almost three abreast. And Waters, has he got far enough up here to continue to argue the point? Side by side through three and four. This often works out awkwardly. Slade not yielding. He's got the inside running. Forward could profit from this as well. Waters on the outside. He forces high and wide on that curbing. And watch for Bryce on the outside in the mid-his entry. Problem for him is the outside at turn six doesn't work out well unless you can stay there. And Chaz Monster keeping a very close eye on all of it. Bit of chasing going on on the left-hand side of the road, our right-hand screen on the run down towards turn one. There is the margin between first and second. Last lap check speed for Feeney Brown. One minute eight flat for Feeney, one minute seven eight for Will Brown. So he continues to just peel a bit of margin out here as Courtney and Heimgartner get stuck into each other on the exit of turn one. Same thing, got through there together nicely. Nothing much in it between Feeney and Brown. It is now inside one second. So it's two tenths of a second better lap last time through for Will Brown over Brock Feeney. Remember, three laps younger tyres on that second Red Bull Ampol Camaro that you can see on screen. We're at the business end. He may get there, whether he's got enough in hand to be able to do anything about it, it's an open question. 0.7 of a second is the gap. I think the Draw's now been broken. So it's gone back out to 1.3. The call came from Andrew Edwards. He's already got the fastest lap. I think that was the maximum attack. Yeah. And there hasn't been any evident faults from Brock Feeney. So you can see it confirmed on screen there with our graphic. And they're well clear of Brody. That little battle going on, though, between Golding and Percat, that's not sorted. So it's only showing on our computer timing is 0.2 of a second between them. Tim Slade here yeah, go, with Thomas here Randall. For Feeney, who did a wonderful job yesterday. It was a faultless performance. Looks strange seeing Jamie in the other colours there. Doesn't <laughs> it doesn't it, the yeah. Guard. The smiling eyes of Mark Dutton. So it's a faster slap for Will Brown. That's not going to change. They've only got a couple of corners remaining, and it's going to be a team one-two today. They've dropped Brody further behind now. He's 17 seconds off the lead. And the margin between Golding Percat, by the way, has gone out to half a second. So James is going to get that one, unless there's a mistake. Sizing up that chequered flag now. And at the top end of this gorgeous country, Feeney is going to make it two for two in the territory. Oh, 
way back, baby! <laughs> way back! Unreal. Great job, everyone. <laughs> I think he's happy about that outcome. Brody Kostecki for Erebus, reigning champion. That's a nice return to form for Brody. Yeah. Great job by Golding over the weekend. Two fourth positions. We've been talking all year about how close he is to getting on the podium. Two days in a row, same thing. Great to have last year's champion Brody Kostecki back at the pointy end again also and be on the podium. So Brody, welcome return to form for Erebus. Percat was able to gain more positions than anyone through the field. He got eight spots to get to fifth. The last podium for Brody was at the Gold Coast last year. It's a long time.